Hello and welcome to DOS Nostalgia. I'm Anatoly and I invite you to the wonderful world of MS DOS Gaming. Today's game is a little known title by Sierra Online Manhunter. Released in 1988 by the adventure gaming giant Sierra Online, Manhunter takes place in the future world of 2004, two years after the Orbellian invasion. You're a Manhunter, a sort of a detective. Orbs implanted tracking devices into every person which can transmit the position, but not the identity of an individual. Hence the need for Manhunters to track the people suspected in criminal activity and report back to Orbs on who they actually are. Your usual day starts with an Orb giving you a task, and you tracking the suspects using your MAD laptop. Then the actual adventure part starts. The game was like no other game of its time. First of all, it's the interface. Even though it uses a Sierra AGI adventure game interpreter, which was first used for King's Quest and then for every adventure game the company has ever produced up until that point, Manhunter can be called the first point and click adventure game from Sierra, even though a mouse is not used. The game is played in a first-person perspective where the directional arrows move your pointer on the screen and enter is your action button. Then there is a dark future, which was a striking contrast to a usual fairy tale, space or current day setting of the other adventure games. The game is also unusually violent, I mean you can't play a game for 10 minutes without running into a fresh dead body. The developers, the Murray family, really tried to give you something different. A dark and disturbing detective mystery was a very unique experience at the time. The game provides you with clues, but you have to put things together by yourself. I find that part of the game to be very enjoyable, and to this day it still stands out, even in the dawn of graphical adventure gaming when pretty much every game was somewhat original, this was still something special. And now we come to the part where I explain why the game wasn't as popular as it should have been. If you're an adventure game player, you'll know that the best way to ruin your adventure experience is to have mazes, arcade sequences, and illogical puzzles in the game. Well, the Manhunter's gameplay consists mostly of these three things. The maze is actually one of the first things you'll encounter in the game, and not only you'll have to get through it, but also you'll have to collect a whole bunch of items from it. It wouldn't have been that bad if the game didn't throw more mazes at you later on. Then there are the arcade sequences, of which there are many, almost to the point where they overpower the adventure part. You can't get a piece of information without being forced to play with knives, running into angry punks, or having to avoid other things that will instantly kill you. Some of these are incredibly frustrating, especially the punks in the alley next to the club, because every time you think it's over there's another level and then you only get a chance to do one action at the club, and if you screw up you'll have to get through the punks again. The authors allowed you to save anywhere in the game, you can even save during the arcade sequences, which helps a lot. Another nice touch is uh, when you die, the developers will appear, insult you in some way, and then, unlike in the other adventure games by Sierra, they'll let you continue from the point before you died. But I guess they kind of had to do that, because almost every wrong action is punished by death. Then there are the puzzles. Because the game tries to keep the story rather vague, the clues to the puzzles are not very obvious. The manual, or the Manhunter field guide, warns you that many objects in the game have symbolic significance and may be used for more than one purpose, which basically means that you'll have to get yourself a pen and some paper and be prepared to take a lot of notes. It can be anything, like this arcade machine is a clue to two puzzles. Basically playing Manhunter can be a frustrating experience. And then the game doesn't give you a satisfactory ending because there is a sequel, Manhunter 2 San Francisco, which is basically the same game with all the same issues. And the third game had never materialized, so we will never know how the story ends. Why do I like this game? 
I guess it's because it has this atmosphere of strangeness uh, around it. It's just too unusual to be ignored. The violence, the interface, and just uh, everything about it. At the time, it was there was nothing like it on the market. And uh, I always kind of regret not seeing the third game get made. Uh, I mean, I, hopefully someday the Murrays get together and uh, they make another one. I don't think the Manhunter was the means for Murray family to write off their family vacations as research for games on their tax return. Uh, I think they just uh, tried to give you something unique and maybe got a bit carried away or they didn't have enough experience in game development, I'm not sure. Uh, to me, Manhunter 1 and 2 are still very enjoyable games. I don't replay them that often, but uh, once I do, you know, it brings back a lot of good memories. And this is it for this episode of Dust Nostalgia. I'm Anatoly, see you next time, thank you for watching.